A very good morning to you. You're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Rume Paulson. And my name is Nyamgul Akaji. It's a wonderful Tuesday morning and we're very happy to know that you are there and watching us. Today we'll be looking at existing oil firms, how they polluted Niger Delta with 36.1 million litres of crude oil in eight years. And also we'll be looking at navigating the dollar inflation with rights of software for your business. So let's see how technology is going to help us to navigate uh, around what is happening in our economy right now. Yes, we'll also um, be looking at what the national dailies are saying this morning as well as some top trending stories. Um, so just sit in. We are here for a ride. Yungo, how was your weekend? My weekend was fine. How was the AFCON My was for long. you? Uh, well, AFCON was AFCON. Like I said the other day, I wouldn't mind even if Ivory Coast won. Yeah, same. And they won. It's not as if I don't want as a, Nigeria, a Nigerian for our country to win, but mm. uh, the story of Ivory Coast is a very inspiring story. So yes. the fact that they won, was they deserved it. Yes, and, and, I, and I honestly, I watched the game. I think they played a very good game. Mm -hmm. um, we had around six, um, 30 something possession. They really, truly really mm -hmm. do well on our heels. And I think they really deserved it. And there was this guy, the um, Sebastian Haller guy that beat cancer, mm -hmm. um, come back to take them to the final and become the winners yeah. of the AFCON 2023. So like you said, it was a very good and inspiring very, story. Very. I wish we had won mm -hmm. as Nigerians, <laughs> but it's okay. But there was something I saw on social media yesterday. Someone had, um, made a made a message like a comment or something and said this showed the importance of being able to share wins because as nigerians most times we always want to be the winners so when it comes to to africa we're like what a giant of africa no one comes close it's okay to be competitive it's okay for you to say i want to win all the time but something that he said i was interested in was when you do that then you become the targets mm -hmm. And when you put a target on your back, every other African country is coming for you. So it's okay for you to be the big brother and share the wins or, you know, pull them with you and say, okay, you know what? These are the ways to go. These are what you can do. And when we celebrate each other, when we share those wins, the target is not on your back. And when you win, I mean, other people are also going to cheer you too. Yeah, so I well, thought that was quite you're interesting. You're not talking to Nigerians because <laughs> Nigerians will drag everybody. <laughs> but before the match, I also saw something on, on X uh, where someone wrote that uh, Super Eagles, share you know. She would not know, so we don't drag every country. So, <laughs> so you better help win. us. <laughs> so, uh, well, that, that's Nigeria for you and all that. And then after the win, uh, and a, a South African said, can we have our, our piano back? You know, <laughs> you know like <laughs> Nigeria has taken everything now that they have been won. Uh, can we have our, our piano back? But th that's just the fun of it. Uh, Nigeria lost, mm -hmm. but I, I don't think we really lost. Lost. Mm -hmm. We didn't get the trophy. It was trophy. nice to have the we silver, too. We didn't get the too. trophy, where, but... We won. Uh, in Nigerians so many are other so ways. funny. I saw on social media people were like, "Oh, the cup is not even for itself. Don't mm -hmm. worry, we're okay with the silver." Is, like, it, <laughs> is, is it this book we have been killing ourselves <laughs> to get? Oh my God, but, I had a good laugh. Yeah, I had yeah, a good laugh. Yeah. All congratulations right. Congratulations to Ivory Coast and congratulations to Nigeria. That's right. A lot of odds were against our boys, but they mm -hmm. got to the finals. And uh, oh my God, I, I the, the, God the stadium that. was orange. Yeah. You could barely see green. The stadium was was There was also the talk that uh, Nigerian Chanted. fans were not sold. Yeah, yes, because, true. Because uh, they knew if our fans were in that stadium the way they should have been, mm -hmm. maybe the narrative would have been yeah. different. Because I think um, I think the Super Eagles did a good job. It's not easy playing in a coastal environment. Um, for instance, you are in another nation. The, the, the stadium is filled with those people. Mm -hmm. Guess what they are going to be chanting? They'll probably say, you would, not, you would not kick the ball in. Mm -hmm. They would be chanting so many things that could actually start to demoralize you or mess with your head. Mm -hmm. So, But I think they still did a good job, especially with the lead that they had in the beginning. I wish they put another one. <laughs> I'm like, can you just get another goal before these people equalize But I mean, enough about football. The Afghan has come and gone. Congratulations, Nigeria. Congratulations, Congratulations to them. Yeah. All right, let's take our quote of the day and just see what we have in store.
And technology revolutionized our lives, but memory, tradition, and myth frame our response. And this is from Arthur Schlesinger. He's an historian. He says, science and technology revolutionize our lives, but memory, tradition, and myth frame our response. Mm. What do you think of that one? It's mm. quite it's quite deep it, though. It is deep, it is mm -hmm. deep. Science and technology. Well, yeah. Our lives has, have changed a lot because of uh, technology, especially because of science, because a lot of things that uh, our forefathers may have seen as uh, coming from the gods, mm -hmm. uh, as a punishment or something. Science <laughs> has given us the opportunity to, uh, yesterday in church, they were reading about lepers being cast out, you know, mm -hmm, you have mm -hmm. to be somewhere else, you, it is a result of sin and all that. Today we know that uh, even lepers can live among us and do uh, and, and become as useful as any other person. Yeah. So we've seen a lot of things, but like they say, tradition meets and the way you were raised, mm -hmm, the way, mm -hmm. the way you were brought up, uh, will, will show how you respond to uh, mm -hmm. this innovation that is coming up and this re revolutionizing <laughs> of, the, <laughs> of, the, of the world yeah. is coming up. So response is very, very critical and mm -hmm. it is the response that leads to good or bad. It's not. Yes. It's not what 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 yeah. what you begin. It's because sometimes we take technology overboard. Mm -hmm. um, so when I when I read this uh, that it, that it says science and technology revolutionize our lives. I mean, you're doing something different, something that has never been done before. Mm -hmm. So that's like a revolution. But the memory, you know, that you have, the tradition, the myth, the things that you've heard. Your father will always tell you, remember mm -hmm. whose daughter you are, remember you whose son yes. you are. Yes, know. so that keeps you in check. Mm -hmm. For instance, I can say I want to take science and start to build bombs. But when I realized that that is not good and what my parents have said or the tradition that we know that, okay, there are certain things we cannot do, you know that you can't use technology for such evil act. Do you understand? So that frames your response like, okay, no, instead I should use it for a better cause. And that's what technology should be about. When it's to revolutionize your life, it is for you to say, I'm using it for a better cause. I'm using it to make humanity better. I'm using it to make our lives better you know better so really that frames our response so i mean yes author is right science and technology revolutionize our lives but the the traditions that we have the memory the myth the frame our response and i think that is a very good quote this morning mm -hmm. so today all right it's tuesday so we talk uh, technology we talk science so it's a very up one today mm -hmm. but let's go to our, our top, top trending, trending stories so our first top trending story is alleged six billion naira fraud Agunloye asked court to prohibit EFCC from trying him. Justice, Justice Jude Umungweze of a federal capital high territory court in Apo Abuja has declined to hear the preliminary objection by the former Minister of Power, Minister Olu Agunloye. Um, Mr. Olu Agunloye challenging the power of the economic Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to prosecute him on the alleged 6 billion Nara Mambila hydroelectric power station fraud. The judge held that the application was not ripe for hearing. He subsequently adjourned the matter till February 26, 2024. In a preliminary objection, Agunloye is seeking an order prohibiting the EFCC from further prosecuting the instant charge against him. Agunloye also said the alleged offenses in the charge were on his activities as a public officer, where he was alleged to have awarded the contracts without budgetary provision, approval, and cash backing. He further said that another of the charges bothered alleged of disobedience of the directives of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and forgery of a letter dated May 22, 2003. Mr. Agunloye was arraigned on a seven-count charge bordering on the fraudulent award of a contract and official corruption in January 2024. Is this even possible? Why do you, how do you go to a court and say, please tell the EFCC not to try me? Well, but it's, it's you a tradition here in Nigeria. Everybody just goes there and says, uh, let, let them not have an injunction against the trial and all that. If you're, if you're guilty 
or if you're if you're innocent, clean yeah why will you even prevent that whoever is coming to try you say okay i'm open i see in other countries once there's an allegation even presidents resign mm -hmm. and say okay let me give room for investigation and everything mm -hmm. and everybody you can try me if you if you think there's something against me but in mm -hmm. nigeria you, you you get an injunction so I, I believe that in some other countries, integrity trumps every other thing. Integrity trumps position. So that's why you will see maybe a president or anyone who has um, an, a political position would resign or even most times help the investigation. Mm -hmm. They would tell you, you know what, call me anything that you need, any information that you need, mm -hmm. I'm willing to give it to you. Because they understand the power of integrity and they don't want a situation whereby people don't trust them anymore. So they want to be transparent, they are open to be transparent to you, to tell you, okay, these are the things I've done. If we're talking about fraud, oh, I did not commit any fraud. But you cannot start to tell the EFCC that, or you cannot start to tell the court to, to, to you know, put an injunction on the EFCC not to try you. Then my question now is, what are you hiding? If you're saying no one should try you, that means you're guilty. So you've even come out to already make yourself guilty or make yourself look guilty, even though they say, you know, you're not guilty until, until charged, but... Must be proven guilty. Yes, you have to be sense. proven guilty. But what you've just done by coming forward like this is just telling people like, hmm, I have skeleton in my cupboards. I mean, so we, please don't check, if, don't check my skeletons. If someone comes to tell me, uh, Nyamgo, you are a roommate and you are a girl, and I know I'm not. You would want to prove Whoever yourself. wants to, to go and try, should, should try. I'll just tell you I am not. And then you use all the mechanisms that you want mm -hmm. to probe to see whether I am a girl or I am Rume. But if I come to tell you, okay, stop him. Don't make him come check. and check yes. and all that. That means, it means maybe. there is something there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, especially the politicians, do this. They get injunctions against uh, prosecution. Yeah, they go here. You don't have. You are not competent to try me. Your, hmm. your the, the time is not. What are you what afraid of? Mean? What are what, you afraid of? What did of? they even mean? The court. What did the court even mean by saying? The, the case, the is case not was not ripe, ripe enough. Yet. A case that should have started 2003 mm -hmm. is not ripe enough. That means EFCC has still not done enough investigation or what? I don't understand what that is, so let me just leave it there. But whoever is guilty or whoever is innocent or mm. feels innocent should just be open to the people to, yeah. to do the probing. Let's be see what, what comes out. Mm -hmm. And everybody will clap for you if we find out later that you were just being witch hunted or you were innocent and people were just trying to uh, drag your name in the mud. We will mm -hmm. we'll applaud you. So I don't know so why that's the thing. It, it, I think it's, it's, it's important that we look into trust. Um, we look into some, some character development that we should have because integrity is super important. You don't want people to drag your name in the mud. The Holy Book, I am a Christian, and the Holy Book will say, um, you know, a good name is better than riches. Mm -hmm. So that good name is important for you. You don't want a situation whereby people would say, oh, look at that man, he's a fraudster, or he went and, you know, he siphoned all public funds. You want a situation that, that even if a whiff comes, they will say, no, we trust this person because he has been tried, we've seen him, he's been investigated, the court says this. But when you start to hide things or tell me that, no, I shouldn't be tried, then it just makes me question who you are and your character, really. But also, we'll, we'll have to question also um, uh, who the courts are. Because sometimes you're just afraid that no matter how innocent you are, you just might be framed because of uh, mm -hmm, some mm -hmm. political interest or some other interest that uh, may be beyond you. That's so, why we need credibility so, uh, on all fronts. Of, so all the trust is on all fronts, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So our next one is on organized labor. The organized private sector um, uh, Ekiti, Sokoto, and other states have faulted the demand by the Nigeria Labor Congress for 1 million Naira minimum wage, stating that it is not realistic. The NLC president, Joa Jairo, in an interview on Monday, said the organized labor might ask for 1 million Naira during the minimum wage negotiations with the federal government if the value of the Naira continued to plummet. Reaction or reacting to the proposal, the Minister of Information and National Orientation, Idris Mohammed, said the federal government would make a, res a reasonable decision in line with national interest and after due consideration of available resources and other factors, 
In the past months, the cost of goods and services has skyrocketed following the removal of the fuel subsidy, while the value of the Naira had continued to fall due to the forex crisis. The NLC and Trade Union Congress had earlier pegged their minimum wage demand at 200,000 Naira, but the NLC president in his Monday interview argued that the flood inflation and high cost of living uh, had made their previous demand unrealistic. When asked if the union's demand for a living wage could be as high as 1 million Naira, Ajayro said this 1 million Naira may be relevant if the value of the Naira continues to depreciate if the inflation continues. He lamented prices of foodstuff were getting out of reach, adding that the organized labor would not accept to get a minimum wage that would not be enough for transportation even for one week. Speaking further, the labor leader complained about the failure of the federal government to fulfill the agreement signed with organized labor last October, noting that it had not fully implemented the 35,000 Naira wage award, which was to be paid to federal workers for six months. He claimed that only one month of the 35,000 Naira was paid to civil servants. He also claimed that there was no evidence of payment of any 25,000 Naira paid as palliatives to workers. That's what led to what's happening in the humanitarian ministry. Speaking on the delay in consulting or constituting the minimum wage committee, Ajero recalled that the old minimum wage will expire by April, noting that the government ought to have set up the negotiation committee six months earlier. He expressed disappointment that the committee had not commenced sitting. Uh, well, that should be enough from, from yeah. that. I don't know, one million naira. Uh, so, I, I, you know, I think maybe they want to start from there because there should be we room like for negotiation. We like haggling, yeah. Yes, because I'm, I'm sure by the time they go sit down with the government and they say we want, you know, two hundred thousand or two hundred and fifty thousand, the government might say, oh no, we cannot afford that. Um, let's bring it down. So it's better for you to start with a, you know, higher figure, and then you start to beat it down, and everyone just kind of meets in the middle. But if we're being honest, what is the what is the value of the money? Because that's what they should be talking mm -hmm. about. You mm -hmm. can't be saying, okay, we're just putting a figure. I, I know someone has said, see, even if our money, even if the minimum wage, right, is, let's say, for instance, is 5,000 naira, as long as all of, your me all of your needs can be met. I say that all the time. With that 5,000 naira, then that's fine. You're not thinking of the numbers. Come on, in America, what like you you see you buy things for like fifty dollars, you buy things for like twenty dollars. Nobody's saying, oh, one million naira, do you understand, or tens of millions of naira. As long as the as long as you can meet your needs, that's that's just what you need. So I think the NLC obviously should be looking at the value of the of the money that you know they are they're asking for these people because if transportation is going to take a whole lot of that money then what's the point because before you go to and fro you know to your place of of work the money is gone mm -hmm. then you have to still think of how to feed you you have to still think of you know paying your rent clothes on your back if you have kids you probably have to pay their school fees then you still have to save because come on, I mean, at some point you want to maybe build your own house, you want to travel, you want to, you know, have a nice car. So all of these things, that's why it is important that they have to look at the value. So if 200,000 Naira can do a lot, why not? Me, I'm open for it. If it's 1 million Naira, because my next question is, how much was dollar as of the time they put that minimum wage? And how much is dollar right now? So is it the same value? Dollar at the moment is, one, is almost 1,500. At some point, it's got to... This on, 1, on the official for, market is yes. more than 1,500 already. In the yes, but so, I mean, on the, with so that... So, our official market is heading towards 2,000 Naira, and what are you saying? So, my and question then, is, the value... Now, now, NLC is talking about the fact that even the 35,000 Naira that they were promised for six months, they only paid one, and there's no evidence that they paid 25,000 to workers and all that. So, when government continually is untrustworthy mm. then a lot of things can happen and i think permit me to say but i think it's laziness on the part of government to be thinking about setting up committees about minimum wage and not looking at the reason why the minimum wage is being demanded in the first place like you said and i always say it all the time if i know that i can get to work without problems i can feed without problems i can my children can go to school without problem and you're paying me fifty thousand, i have no problem yes because at the end of the day, 50000 that you're paying me might just be the money I'm trying to invest 
or I'm trying to save because mm -hmm. I have everything that I need. But in the, f in the, in the, in the situation where school fees in the university <laughs> that was like 50,000 Naira, and now every university has raised it up to 200,000. And then you're talking about buying other small things, you know, handouts here, handouts mm -hmm. there, uh, textbooks here and all that. At the end of the day, something that was supposed to cost you, let's say 500,000 for your child to go through school will now cost you like 10 million Naira. And you're expecting me to accept 200,000. What is it going to do, do for, me? for me? Even if I own a car, the shortest distance, how many liters of fuel, fuel will it take? I, yeah. Before now, before last year, May, you could buy, let's say, five liters of fuel for a thousand naira. How many liters do you buy for a thousand now? Even From five to five one, one, one liter. So, so you see how things are going up and up. So if they can address the food problems, they can address the dollar problem, they can address the uh, fuel problem, I think a lot of people will not be complaining the mm -hmm. way we're complaining mm -hmm. right now. I agree. I agree. All right, let's move over to our final story. So this says Nigerian Judicial Commission receives petition to probe Bainway chief judge. The uh, social political organization, the Bainway Diaspora Vanguard, has petitioned the National Judicial Council, NJC, to open an investigation on the Bainway chief judge, Justice Maurice Ikpangwese Ichol, over alleged non-declaration of assets amid other infractions. And a petition addressed to the chairman of the NJC and signed by the convener of Bainway Diaspora Vanguard U.S. Chapter Comrade Itodo Isaac, a copy of which was sent to the reporter. The group decried happenings in the Bainway State Judiciary, urging the NJC to investigate. The group also accused the Justice Ikpangwese of nepotism, saying the chief judge has been secretly assigning his kingsmen and close allies who were lawyers to high-stakes political cases with strict instructions to play to the gallery. Any lawyer or judicial staff opposed to a scheme is severely punished. And a recent transfer of the registrar of the Alia Day High Court Division after withdrawing the case file of controversial political case is cited as one of such examples. The group says the open miscarriage of justice has become a norm in Bainway State and must be investigated by the NJC. The group equally called on the NJC to investigate the case of Bainway State Board of Internal Revenue BIRS versus Mobile Telecommunications Limited MTN, where records have shown that the current chief judge abused his office by awarding damages that were in excess of the entire judgment sum sought in the suit. While giving the NJC a two-week ultimatum to act on their petition or face a protest by all Benue sons and daughters at the national headquarters of the National Judicial Council, the group urged the NJC to review the last 15 judgments issued by the current chief judge of Benue State and confirm the authenticity of their allegations and claims. What are your thoughts? <laughs> I have no thoughts. That's the same judiciary that yeah. we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. When people will now come out to say uh, that um, they, they suspect that there's something fishy. These are people that are supposed to be above board, people that we have to trust. And now people are calling for their head and saying that they've been doing what they're not supposed to do. It's, it beats me. I don't even know what to say. So I think there should be check and, checks and balances in everything. And if there, is, if there are organizations that are supposed to be checking the politicians or even the judiciary, I would welcome that, but what I don't want is witch hunting or then when you start to, you know, um, plant, plant things, just to bring someone down. Mm -hmm. So for a case like this, if, if the man is clean, I mean, you know, yes, probe me, let's yeah. find out. Like architect um, Nyaito would always say, if the citizens fail, fail to rise, then we will keep being what we are, we'll sit having the country that we have, mm -hmm. the office of the citizen has to rise up. And if the, because the citizens are the ones that will check everybody. Yes. They will check the politicians and recall them if they don't uh, perform. Mm -hmm. They will check the judiciary and do what they are doing here right now. They will check the, the, the legislators. legislators, everybody. So whoever is not doing well, the, the mechanism for checks and balances is the office of the citizen, which yeah. we have not taken seriously. And I think we should. We should start, start to call out people yes. that are not working or people. But like you said, it shouldn't be a witch hunt. Yes. It shouldn't be because you are in the opposition. It shouldn't be. Mm -hmm. For instance, now, 
uh, people are talking about hunger and starvation in the land, and the politicians are busy saying they are the There's opposition. No, mm -hmm. So you're telling me that if I don't eat in my house, it's because I'm opposition or what? <laughs> A lot of people have come out to say that uh, we were clamoring for this uh, election to go mm -hmm. a certain way, but now we are all suffering. We are grouped into the same. So it is nothing like opposition. When it is true, it is true. When it is wrong, it is wrong. Yeah. So the office of the citizen have to, has to sit up so that we can check all these people that are doing these things excessively. Right. All right, let's go on a quick break. We'll look at the weather. When we, when we come back, we'll be discussing the paper review. Stay with us.